Hello everybody and uh, welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to talk about diabetes type 2. So let's pull out our usual demonstration. Human body, like an illustration of it. And the main organ we're going to focus on is the pancreas, which is just around here um, below the stomach. And if we zoom in a little bit, this is the pancreas. So the pancreas is um, is an organ uh, which produces insulin uh, through some specialized cells, which are the beta cells. And obviously insulin is a hormone that is produced from the pancreas, which allows you to process sugar or glucose or carbohydrates. In diabetes type two, um, there's two things that could happen in, that could be happening that your body doesn't produce enough insulin. So let's just say not enough insulin or the cells in the body don't um, really use it as well as they would like to or cells in the body don't use insulin properly let's just keep it that way or sometimes even both. So let's just quickly go through the risk factors. So if we go to the side of the illustration, so let's just say risk factors. And just make it nice. And uh, let's choose another color for what we're going to talk about. So diabetes type two can affect anyone of any any age. But let's just assume. Um, based on obviously finding that it mainly affect those over the age of 40, over 40 years old, right? I'll just put the dash here. And uh, mainly if you have a family history of diabetes type 2, so family history of diabetes 2, okay? And the usual being overweight, um, or be obese or basically just not being physically uh, active increases your risk factors for diabetes type 2. So what are the common uh, symptoms? So let's just say common symptoms. This is actually quite accurate. Uh, most of the patients that uh, present to the clinic will present with um, similar to obviously type 1 diabetes um, polydipsia which is basically increased uh, uh, thirstiness polyuria which is a uh, increased um, urination very very important and one of the things they also present is um, just tiredness, generally tired. Obviously it's not specific, um, but obviously from polydipsia and polyuria plus tiredness, you're thinking, okay, could this be uh, diabetes? So how do you diagnose this patient? So let's just shift things a little bit to you. Away and um, let's just say diagnosis. Okay, diagnosis, and let's choose the blue color again. So I always do a urine dipstick, dipstick, before you, you start anything. And you will probably see, uh, you know, traces of sugar or glucose in uh, urine. Very, very important, obviously with symptoms. Then you do a blood test. And obviously you want to rule out any other um, conditions, obviously TSH, full blood counts, user knees and all that. But obviously because we are talking about diabetes today, you want to do the HB, oh, maybe if I put HbA1c, um, and you'll see that the, um, the sugar levels which should be above 48 um, minimal, I think per liter. Don't quote me on that. And generally, if this patient presents with um, 
that's findings plus symptoms okay so if you have the symptoms already then this is that they have diabetes okay you don't have to repeat it again okay if they didn't have no symptoms then they don't have diabetes well you're not too sure they may have you may find a random high reading you need to repeat it after four weeks and if it's also the second um blood sugar levels are high then they have diabetes then you can go through conservative management conservative management or not now going back to this case scenario let's choose uh, the red red again and if they are symptomatic they have polyuria polydipsia and this is obviously the trace on the dipstick and the blood sugar levels are also high you need they have obviously diabetes diagnosed is diagnostic okay and you need to start treatment so we're going to talk about the treatment so let's just say start treatment because there's no point at this point um, um, doing conservative management so the first line treatment so we just just move things quite a bit let's choose the red color so the treatment first line treatment is always and always metformin unless contraindicated so if we write uh, metformin here so um, first line metformin and um, so the advantage of metformin it uh, reduces uh, glucose level or gl the glucose produced by by liver by the liver and you can like always start at at a lower dose you always start um, once daily uh, which should be about 500 milligram then after two weeks two weeks you you can review it review and uh we can you know increase let's remove this increase those i hope that's that was quite uh clear and obviously you need to let the patient know um one of the main symptoms of um, starting metformin is diarrhea. So let's just say um, GI symptoms. I'm really struggling to write <laughs> symptoms. Uh, come on. Unless it's really bad, generally we we keep them on metformin because it's the safest one. You know, there's not very much contraindication now. As a PA studying for the national exam, most questions will revolve around this, but I'm just going to mention some other medication, not the all, not all of them, but I'm just going to mention some other medication that you should have an idea, which will lead you to obviously your job title. The second medication I want to talk about is the sulfonylurease or glipside. I'm really bad with this. So let's just say second line, second line. Uh, could be let's choose the blue color again now I'm going to try to spell it out sol for my lu rays or glip pizide oh, this are this are a mouthful for me guys this is horrible and just to keep just th there may be a question about this because a patient may be on um, on anti-diabetic medication and uh, they may say oh, what is causing the hypo there's obviously a list of medications some of the obviously some of them to put you off and they may be metformin or a, or a glipizide and one of the uh, side effects let's just say side effect is um, hypoglycemia very important you know this and uh, so obviously you need to check with the patient and this happened because it basically increases the insulin um, 
insulin concentration ration in the blood okay so it's very important you are aware of at least this these two main ones okay and uh, the third thing I would like to mention so let's just choose a different color third medication I would like to mention so let's just say third line which is not necessarily third line but I just wanted to mention it because there's quite a lot of them let's choose a blue color is the gliptin now the, the name itself is a uh, dipeptide peptidase 4 or something um, gliptin are often chosen instead of sulfonyl or glipizide right <laughs> because they have uh, less side effects so less side effect okay very important and um, and they have a reduced chance of causing hypoglycemia so reduced uh, hypoglycemia so oh my god yeah so those are the these are the three medication i think you should know at least for your national exams there's plenty of more and i'm going to kind of like re release uh, on the website in the future all all of them so you can have a read about it but i've not finished uh, doing the website yet that's it for me today hope you guys enjoyed this video and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more content and for the next release have a nice day goodbye